Today, we're going to be looking at these little but powerful devices. Meet the 5 GHz wireless bridge from Rayi. They allow us to send Wi-Fi across long distances. They come pre-pad out of the box for point-to-point -point connection, but we can also add multiple bridges for point-to-multipoint, which is handy for connecting to multiple buildings. Out of the box, they're very easy to set up, and we're going to show you a bit of that later. The first section of this video, we're going to cover some of their specs and features. And then after that, we're going to set them up for some testing. We've got three bridges and we're going to configure them for point to multi-point bridging. The wireless bridge runs on a 5 gigahertz MIMO setup, giving you speeds of up to 867 megabits per second. This makes it ideal for streaming high resolution video, sending large files or connecting to remote buildings with minimal lag. Each unit includes a 10 dBi directional antenna, 60 degrees horizontal and 30 degrees vertical. Pay attention to this spec when you're comparing it to other devices, most bridges are limited to just a 10 degree angle. And you know, 60 degrees is a big help when it comes to maintaining a strong signal across long distances, up to one kilometer in ideal conditions. You'll find a single 100 megabits per second LAN port on each device's injector and then powered via 24 volt passive PoE, which keeps cabling simple. A set of LEDs on the side show your signal strength, making alignment straightforward. These bridges are IP54 weather rated and can operate in temperatures ranging from minus 30 to positive 55 degrees Celsius. Even if they're outside in the cold or in a warm elevator shaft, they're built to last. Now, let's get into the setup. You should note on the back of the bridge whether it's the camera end or recorder end. We're going to be connecting the recorder end to our network. This is going to save you some headache later. We're going to connect our injectors to the mains, and then we're going to run our Cat5 to the bridge from the PoE port. The LAN port we're going to run to our network. We've connected ours to our PoE switch here, and for easy pairing, connect all your bridges close together to begin with. All of ours are within SSID range. Now let's open the Ruji Rayi app on our phone to configure our devices. We're going to add and configure our bridges from the Rayi app, starting with our factory prepared bridges. You'll need to create an account if this is your first time using the app. Then we're going to hit create a project. We're going to scan the QR code on the back of the recorder end, or alternatively, you can punch in the serial number. Next, it's going to prompt us to connect to the recorder end SSID Wi-Fi. To figure out which SSID we want to connect to, we're going to look for the last digits of the MAC address on our bridge, and these are going to be labeled on the corresponding SSID name. Okay, now we're connected. I'm going to go back on my Android interface. It's going to prompt us to set our management password. Remember this detail for later. And that's our prepared bridges added to our project. Now let's pair our third. With our Wi-Fi still connected to the recorder end bridge, let's head to our bridge group page. Hit the three dots above your bridge group and select scan device. It's going to prompt you for your management password a few times here. Now we can add our new bridge. Again, take note of the MAC address for your unpaired bridge. We're going to connect this in a second. Now, we haven't updated the firmware on our bridges yet, which means this base station first option won't work for us. As a workaround, we're going to select CPE first. That's going to have us connect our bridges through our unpaired bridges SSID. Because we have our recorder end bridge set up as the base station, we're going to select yes. Now let's connect our new bridges SSID, remembering to select from the last digits of the MAC address. Set the management password. We're going to hit the plus icon here to establish the base station. You can check on the back of your bridge again here to confirm that the serial number is correct and start pairing.
If you find the pairing fails, check your phone's Wi-Fi to make sure you're still connected to the correct bridge. And that's it. Your bridges are now paired and transmitting Wi-Fi. Now with our bridges paired and configured, let's have a look at the cameras. To begin our testing, we've set up our bridges in the warehouse and we're going to try them in different locations to see how the signal fares. And then we're going to try something more ambitious and test them closer to the limit of the recommended signal distance. In the warehouse, you can see that we can easily transmit data from our cameras seamlessly. We even connected our 16 channel MVR to a camera end to see how quick data would be sent back and forth. Here's our second camera bridge connected to this very focal multi-sensor. After that, we tested the bridge deeper into the warehouse to see how it could handle transmission through shelving and boxes. And as you can see from this footage, our cameras are both sending data back seamlessly to our network. Now for a bit more of an ambitious test. We're gonna bridge the gap between our office here in Concord across three quarters of a kilometer to this block of apartments where we'll have a camera set up. Here's our setup for this test. We've got a bridge and PoE powered from a battery base. We're getting mobile data from this 4G modem which is connected directly to my laptop. Across the gap in the building, we've got our camera bridge set up with our camera being powered via an injector. It's not a perfect alignment for the bridge, but it should work just fine for this test. Let's check out the footage. It's looking good. We're getting a steady, consistent feed, even with our apartment bridge's beam angle positioned outside its capabilities. Because our bridges aren't perfectly aligned, we've adjusted our camera encoding settings for a smoother speed and increased the bridge's transmission length and power output. What's also impressive is our third bridge deep in the warehouse is still providing a strong signal despite all the concrete we're next to and the recorder bridge facing completely the opposite direction. These bridges are pretty powerful devices. If you're looking for an outdoor long distance Wi-Fi solution, they're a great option. With versatile and easy to configure setup options from the Ray app and web interface, a weather resistant build and strong speeds to support your cameras and network, these bridges are perfect for your security needs. That's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more security insights. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.